Hello everyone, it's Catalia. So in this video, I am super excited to show you guys my tadpoles that I got from Houston Frogs. They set me up with my very own kit to grow up my tadpoles and show you guys the entire process. So I'm going to be going step by step through their tadpole kit and then their froglet grow out kit and time lapsing all of it and showing you guys kind of how to grow your own frogs. So the very first step is to get your tadpoles into their own little totes so you can monitor their growth and make sure they get the adequate amount of food that they need. So they set me up with three critter keepers because I have three tadpoles I'm going to be raising and they do need to be kept separately as they are cannibalistic. So of course I'm going to be doing one at a time. The instructions say to fill the tote with distilled water about an inch from the top. So I'm going to be using my distilled water here and filling it up about an inch from the top as the instructions say. So the kit they supplied me with comes with everything I'm going to need to raise and care for my own tadpoles. And just an overview, this kit contains four different food items for your tadpoles, three different habitat enrichment items, a measuring spoon, a critter keeper to keep the tadpole in, black water extract, and instructions on how to care for your tadpoles. Step two is to add 15 drops of black water extract into the water. The next step is to place the habitat enrichment items into the enclosure. One choya wood. I believe that's how you say that. Oh my gosh, these are so cute and tiny. Two alder cones. Basically super cute tiny pine cones. One and two. Then I'm going to put half of one of these Indian almond leaves into the water as well. And the next step is to actually place the cup with your tadpole inside into the water so the temperature can acclimate. And you do this for about two hours. So while this little guy acclimates, I'm going to go ahead and set up the other two tadpoles in this exact same fashion. And I will be back in two hours. Alright, so I got all three of them done, and something I forgot to mention is make sure the lid is off of your cup because they do need oxygen. And then I'm just going to let them acclimate for about two hours, and then I will pour them into their new homes, and we will continue with the steps from there. Okay guys, it's uh, been about two hours, so I'm back here with the tadpoles, and their water seems to be about the same temperature now. So I'm going to just pour them into their new home. these down on the bottom right there. Um, the instructions say to go ahead and give them a couple of pellets. So the kit actually comes with four different foods and you're meant to cycle through them regularly to give them a variety in their diet. And you feed your tadpole every other day using this measuring spoon. And you use the small end of the spoon for tadpoles a half inch long or less and then the large end of the spoon for tadpoles larger for tadpoles larger than a half inch. And if any food is left uneaten, you just feed them less than you usually do on your next feeding. So you're meant to cycle through all four food types. For example, feeding three to six tadpole bites, which is this one, on day one. And then the pollen, which is this one, the bright yellow, on day three. And then zooplankton, which is this light tan bag here, on day five. And then you can feed them algae on day seven and again, tadpole bites on day nine. And they recommend three to six tadpole bites. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this little guy some tadpole bites. Look how cute he is. He's so cute. 
He's so cute and tiny. Okay, so I'm just gonna follow these steps uh, with the other two tadpoles as well. Okay, so the next step basically is to put them somewhere cool between 70 and 75 degrees with indirect sunlight or LED light and continue to care for them as directed. And within 10 to 12 weeks, the tadpoles will be ready to move into the grow out tank which is the next step of the video and the next stage of their life and that is when they start growing legs and you can move them into a grow out tank. So all of this is going to be in this one video so keep watching to see what happens and I'm going to be doing regular updates on them as they grow and change so we can kind of see how they develop. I guess see you guys back in a couple days. Alright you guys, so here's what the little tadpoles look like now, and they're kicking and swimming now. So it's actually just about time to put them into this grow out tank here. They still have pretty long tails, but as they grow in the pond in the grow out tank, they absorb their tail and their legs get bigger and stronger, and they get their front legs as well. So basically, as they absorb their tail, they won't really eat anything because their source of nutrients and fat is in their tail, which provides them all the nutrients that they need as they grow into their final stages. And the extract that I put into the tadpole homes creates a murky effect like this, but after a few days, it starts to get pretty dark. And the pamphlet says to do a small water change pretty frequently, so I'm going to demonstrate how I do that as well. So basically what it says to do is pour out a small amount and then refill it with fresh distilled water and add a few drops of the extract in once again. So water change is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to check back on these guys in a couple of days and they should have bigger legs and they'll be ready to go into the grow out tank. So once these guys move into their grow out tank, their primary diet is going to be springtails since they're so small. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that there is a thriving colony of springtails in the enclosure before I add the frogs into their little water here. So what they'll do is they'll start in here and as they get bigger and absorb their tail, they'll ease their way out of the pond and into the enclosure. And from here they can grow up and once they're big enough, they'll move into a really big gorgeous bioactive enclosure made by Houston frogs. And they did supply me with this master culture of springtails, so I'm going to be adding some in here. There already are some in there, but I want to add some more and make sure that there's a big colony going inside of the tank before I add in the frogs. Lots of little springies in there. But it needs more! Okay, so it's been almost 10 weeks since I got the tadpoles and I just put them in their grow out tank. This is the Houston Frogs Froglet Grow Out um, and it's basically just a beautifully planted bioactive kit and it comes with a spout for if there's too much water in it, you can drain it. It comes with a lot of beautiful live plants and then it has this little hut um, and it's equipped with isopods and springtails. Yeah, I just moved the two little guys into this little pond um, now that they have four legs. Let's see where the other one is. So once they get four legs, you can move them into this, and as they absorb their tail, they will slowly crawl out of this and into the enclosure on their own. And because they're absorbing their tail during this time, you don't need to actually feed them um, because they get all the nutrients that they need through their tail. And once they come out of the little pond, you're meant to feed them 20 to 40 springtails each day, and you're also supposed to mist once a day for the first two weeks to help keep up adequate hydration and humidity. And then you can start introducing melon and gaster fruit flies dusted with Rapashi Calcium Plus uh, at the second week, starting with five to 10 flies. And then watch to see if they eat the flies. Uh, and then once they begin eating flies, you can feed them every other day with 10 to 20 flies dusted with calcium. It is vital that your froglet starts eating these dusted fruit flies to absorb the calcium needed for proper bone growth. Also, make sure you don't overwhelm the froglet with fro 
with flies, not fries. Um, if a significant number of them are left in the enclosure, when you come back to feed, reduce the amount of flies added during feedings. Um, too many flies in the enclosure can stress them out and cause them to stop eating. And then once the frog loot has reached three to four months of age, you can move them into a larger enclosure. Houston Frogs recommends five gallons per frog minimum. And they're going to be custom building me a beautiful enclosure to put these froglets in. So, and that'll be our next step after we start feeding them. So once they come out of the pond, I'm going to feed them some springtails and then we'll start feeding them flies and then move them into their big enclosure. Guys, look, I'm so happy right now. I'm so excited. It's only been a week now since I put them into this enclosure and this little one has come out on its own and its tail is already basically gone. The other one is still in here. His tail is still pretty long, but I have lots of springtails in here so they're able to eat enough when they come out and I've been misting it with distilled water every day. Look at him, he's so pretty. That's the one week after moving them into their grow out enclosure update. Guys, the second one just came out of the pond. Look how cute and small it is. So the Terribilis is what the species is. They start coloring up with orange or yellow stripes on their sides and then it slowly forms over the rest of their body. Um, these are sometimes called the golden dart frogs because they basically look like little chunks of gold and they are so pretty. So I'm so happy that these are the ones that Houston Frogs chose to let me try this experiment out with. And here's the other one hiding in here. He's quite a bit bigger than the other one for some reason. Yeah, and this tank is really growing in, so it looks really awesome. And I've just been giving them their springtails, um, and I'm starting to give this one some fruit flies, dusted with calcium, to ensure proper bone growth for the first stages of its life. So yeah, basically this is the two-week update of them coming out of the water. This one just came out of the water like a couple days ago. This one's been out of the water for almost a week and a half now. But yeah, they're doing great. They're eating fruit flies. It's the first time they're eating fruit flies. And they're starting to get a lot more orange too. So I just dusted the fruit flies with this Rapashi Calcium Plus that Houston Frog supplies in the Froglet Grow Out Kit. And yeah, they're already eating them. Good sign, they're growing up good. Wish I could find the other one. This is so heavily grown in though because I've been letting it grow for a long time, so. So it's finally time to move my froglets into their final tank and Houston Frogs put together this tank for me. Chase, uh, the owner of Houston Frogs is actually here and he's going to explain in depth kind of how he put it together. Alright, so here we have our Margravia uh, sentiense. Uh, we have a really nice uh, about 7 uh, inch cutting of that. We have that on some sphagnum moss to really help it to establish hold humidity to it. Then we also have a Earth Star. They'll grow decently large and they'll stay low to the ground. Uh, we have a monkey pod here and those can be used for uh, water, they can be used for food. Those are so cool. <laughs> Just a really cool little accent. Um, and in the back of course we have our uh, drainage pipe. It's not saying that really stands out too much but it's nice because if your tank ever has a lot of water in the bottom you can always just siphon it out instead of having to move the substrate. In the middle here we have uh, one of our jewel orchids. These are one of my favorites. They really look like they have gold in the veins of the leaves. We also have one of our uh, 3D printed uh, frog huts in the back which eventually can be outfitted with a petri dish and uh, frogs will lay eggs in there and then you can just lift the top off to look for eggs. Uh, in the back we have a piece of uh, hollow cork bark and we have some moss that we situate on it so that hopefully the moss will eventually grow over it and take that part over. Uh, two different types of moss actually, two different types of sheet moss. Uh, then we have a uh, bromeliad, it's known as an avocado bromeliad. And I love that. <laughs> um, and then we have a couple of liana vines here just sort of as accents to the tank. Uh, in the corner we have a uh, Slaginella. There's lots and lots and lots of varieties, but this one's really cool because it's almost like a, a little bush. It doesn't really take over the tank like some types do. Yeah, it's cool how it's growing up like that. And then, of course, we have our big piece of Choya wood here from a Choya cactus. Moving down, we outfit it with uh, first Indian almond leaves and then live oak leaf litter on top. So it'll give you a really good base to separate the frogs from the substrate for them to be able to hop on the leaves and also forage through the live oak leaves for ice pods, springtails, and the occasional flies that try to hide. Uh, moving down, we have our ABG substrate here. Um, it has actual fern fiber in it. You know, I have to make that distinction that it's not ABG unless it has fern fiber, and that's what we use as a top dressing because it has large particulates that eventually will break down and add to 
the secondary layer. Uh, the secondary layer is uh, our tropical substrate. Uh, why I formulate that? I formulate it to have not only excellent drainage, but also maintain a higher level of humidity than what uh, typical ABG does. And that's to help the microfauna population to establish. We also uh, inoculate this with about 12 different types of symbiotic fungi, uh, as well as a lot of official microbes, and it has a lot of different trace elements in it to help plants to uh, stay nice and green. Um, at the bottom, we have our high fired calcium clay. Uh, this is something that's going to help to separate the uh, substrate from the drainage area below, keep the substrate from falling into the drainage area. It also acts as an additional moisture regulator. Uh, as it absorbs moisture from water percolating through the ground, if the substrate starts to dry out, it'll actually release moisture back to the substrate. It also acts as a, another calcium source for the isopods too, which need uh, calcium for exoskeletal growth. Uh, at the bottom, uh, something that we're really proud of, this is our new drainage grate system that we're 3D printing. Uh, we design this, we start printing it, um, and the whole concept of it is to make a very modular system where you can literally just take out the package, plug it in, and start building your tank instead of the hassle before of uh, fiddling with egg crate and yeah. cutting it just perfect. So this will make the tank lighter. It'll give you a lot more area below for water to accumulate over time uh, before you have to finally siphon it out. And it just makes it a lot easier to build a tank. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm sure the frogs are going to love it. Well, it looks like it's finally time to move my little froglets into their final tank. So it's typically safe to move them into their big enclosure whenever they're about nickel size. So here we go. Okay, there's the first little one in the tank. It's such a big tank compared to them. They're so small. All right, well, all four froglets are in their new enclosure. And yes, I did end up picking up a few more from Houston Frogs to add to the tank. There's one right there. So yeah, they're about the size of a nickel right now. Um, and they'll continue to grow and they'll continue to change into an orangey yellow color. So I'll go ahead and insert a picture of what they should look like when they are fully grown in a few months. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video of how I raised tadpoles into froglets. Special thanks to Houston Frogs for the froglets and for these beautiful tanks. If you're interested in growing up your own tadpoles into frogs, then I suggest going through Houston Frogs for sure. They do have a website which I will link in the description for you guys. So be sure to go check them out and follow them and find them at some local Texas reptile expos. And for more info on this particular frog species, look in the description and I'll have some links for you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! So really quick, I just wanted to show you guys the other terrarium that Houston Frogs built for me for my Santa Isabels. See, there's one there. It's in the circular terrarium. And it comes with this hut that has a removable lid with a water dish inside so you can check and see if they've laid eggs. And lots of pretty plants and moss and things so I was just going to feed them and show you guys them as well. <laughs>